And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Welcome to News 12 Now for this October 28th, Monday, everybody. I'm Annette Campbell. Two people are dead after an early morning home explosion in Van Alstine. Earlier this morning, we told you about the fire in Grayson County, and now we can confirm an update. The, Grace, the Grayson County Fire Marshal John Wieda says around 1 o'clock this morning, the home off of Stone Marshall Road exploded, possibly of a propane tank leak. The cause is still being investigated. Both people inside, an adult man and woman, were killed. Their identities have not been confirmed yet. Neighbors tell us nearby homes felt the force of the explosion and some even had broken windows. We have a reporter on the scene and we'll bring you more information as we get it. And as we draw closer to Halloween, still not feeling like it out there. Temperatures into the 80s now, and it's only going to be going warmer from here. Also very windy. Notice the southerly winds sustain 10 to almost 25 miles an hour, probably gusting up to 35, especially closer to the I-35 corridor. So the hot, the dry, the sunshine, making for some less than ideal fire conditions in the sense that yeah, if something gets started on fire, it's going to go up in flames quickly. Humidity is okay. It's higher than it has been lately, but still definitely will not be enough to completely crush the fire threat. So as we enter this afternoon, we're going to be rising to near record highs today, upper 80s, maybe a couple lower 90s. And I know everybody's getting really sick and tired of the hot and dry weather. It comes to an end eventually, but it's going to be windy and hot today and tomorrow. We do have rain and severe thunderstorm chances to talk about primarily for the Wednesday night into early Halloween time frame. And we also have your Halloween forecast as well, in addition to possibly a stormy weekend. So we're going to break down all the latest updates coming up in your full forecast coming up here in just a minute. Till then, back to you, Annette. Thanks, Brian. We now know the name of the man shot at a gas station in Ardmore Thursday. Police say during a traffic stop, officers spoke with the passenger, Joshua Estrada, who gave false information about his identity because of an outstanding warrant. When officers asked Estrada to leave the car, he made an implied threat against the officers. When officers tried to arrest Estrada, he made a sudden movement in their direction and the officers fired several shots. Estrada was taken to an Ardmore hospital where he was treated and released. The driver of the car and the officers involved were not injured. The OSBI is investigating the shooting and the officers involved have been placed on a routine administrative leave. Estrada has been arrested for terroristic threats. A former Durant Middle School student teacher who had an inappropriate relationship with a then 14-year-old student has been sentenced to 25 years in federal prison. Federal prosecutors announced the sentence of 25-year-old Ryan Capps Friday. The abuse happened in 2022 and Capps was found guilty by a federal jury in May. Capps, who the feds confirmed was employed as a teacher and coach at the time, is not eligible for parole. Fans of McDonald's are getting some good news after a bad week for the company. McDonald's says it's putting the quarter pounder back on menus nationwide. That's after an E. coli outbreak tied to the burgers prompted their removal from locations in some states. The Colorado Department of Agriculture says it tested beef patties from restaurants associated with the outbreak and found no E. coli. Investigators think another potential source of the outbreak could be contaminated onions. Now, McDonald's might have ruled out the patties as the outbreak source, but that doesn't mean federal regulators have. The FDA website still says it's still uncertain which ingredient made people sick. A new report by payment card company Visa says new attacks are hitting consumers to rob their accounts and steal consumer information. Visa, that consumers are being pelted with stepped up attacks to defraud consumers. The report notes issues like thieves buying gift cards or physical products using stolen payment information or using card numbers for money transfers. Criminals also do digital pickpocketing with point of sale mobile devices and tap an unsuspecting consumer's wallet. Visa fraud recommends to watch out in crowded situations, turn on real time purchase alerts and use two factor authentication. With just over a week to go until Election Day, a new CBS News poll shows the two presidential candidates tied in the battleground states. Today, a joke made by a comedian at the Trump rally is 
sparking backlash and could have an impact among Latino voters. Natalie Brand reports from Washington, D.C. In Philadelphia Monday, Democrats and Latino leaders slammed former President Donald Trump for comments made by a speaker at his Madison Square Garden rally Sunday. The truth is that those insults are in line with the trajectory of insults to Puerto Ricans by Donald Trump himself. The backlash is over this controversial joke from comedian Tony Hinchcliffe. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. The Trump campaign said the remarks do not reflect the former president's views, but the damage may have been done. Less than two hours later, Puerto Rican musical superstar Bad Bunny reshared a video from Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign to his nearly 46 million followers. I will never forget what Donald Trump did and what he did not do when Puerto Rico needed a caring and a competent leader. The controversy is threatening to overshadow Trump's closing arguments, capping off the star-studded event at one of the world's most famous arenas. We will have the strongest economy, the most secure borders, the safest cities, the most powerful military. Vice President Harris spent Sunday in Philadelphia courting black and Latino voters. With an estimated 580,000 Latino voters in the most coveted battleground state, they could be the deciding factor in a race that polls show is neck and neck. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. A new CNN poll shows most voters do not think former President Donald Trump will concede if he loses the election. According to the poll, only 30 percent of registered voters think Trump will accept the results of the election and concede if he loses. The poll also found the majority of voters, 56 percent, have little or no confidence in the Supreme Court to correctly decide any election-related legal cases. Oh, one man was killed and dozens of other people hurt when a truck rammed into a bus stop near Tel Aviv Sunday in a suspected terror attack. Also over the weekend, Israel launched a wave of airstrikes against military targets in Iran. The latest escalation in a growing regional conflict. The Israeli military says it has now completed its mission in Iran, but tensions remain high. Rami Inocencio reports from Tel Aviv. Booms over Tehran as Israel's airstrikes met Iran's air defenses. We conducted targeted and precise strikes on military targets in Iran. Under Israel's military headquarters in Tel Aviv, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu monitored. The IDF said it hit Iranian surface-to-air missile systems and missile production sites. Whoever hurts us, we hurt him, said Netanyahu on Sunday. Israel's strikes were retaliation for Iran's attack on October 1st, when it launched nearly 200 ballistic missiles. The Zionists have made a miscalculation, said Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. We must make them understand. Danny Citrinowitz is an Israeli national security expert on Iran. Do you think this Israel-Iran back and forth is over? The bottom line is even uh, we don't know whether back and forth of that or the tip of that will end. But I think that uh, towards the future, obviously, I think there will be probably there will be other rounds between both countries. Avoiding a regional war, he says, rests on ending Israel's operations against Hezbollah in Lebanon and its conflict with Hamas in Gaza. <laughs> IDF strikes killed more than 80 people over the weekend, according to Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry, where Israeli troops raided one of the last functioning hospitals and struck a school turned shelter for the second time in a week. The IDF maintains Hamas uses civilian infrastructure to hide fighters and weapons. If Gaza is not resolved, Israel's second retaliation against Iran in six months could be a harbinger of things to come. How close did we get to the wider regional war that we've been fearing? I can say that we are closer than ever. And CIA Director Bill Burns is back in Qatar to try to restart talks between Israel and Hamas. Egypt has proposed a two-day ceasefire and the release of four Israeli hostages for Palestinian prisoners. And that would at least be a start. Ramey Innocencio, CBS News, Television.
Thank you for watching today's News 12 Now. Make sure to subscribe so you find out why Texoma turns to us. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where you'll see more social media exclusive content. Want more News 12 Now? Watch us live every weekday through the KXII app on your phone or TV and through our website.